they can use of God to reach out to someone crying today, to reach out to someone going through pain, to reach out to someone going through struggles. Lord, I pray, bring a word in season. Bring a word of God that will turn destinies around. I pray and I prophesy that, Lord, their lives will not be the same as that their ears are open to the word of God, as their spirits are open to the word of God. I pray you will take charge, Lord. We bless you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you, precious King. Thank you, mighty God. We bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, this is Willie Bros. Teacher Gospel Heroes World Missions. Monday, we're storing the message, redefining the ministry, refocusing the church. Of course, I'm very much more excited and delighted every single time I have the opportunity to bring God's word. I don't take it for granted. I believe a moment with God is a moment with destiny. Your life cannot be the same. I don't know the attitude of your mind every time you seek to watch our broadcast. But I want you to realize one thing. It's a moment of encounter. Your destiny can change. Everything about your life can change. God can turn your destiny around. Every time the word of God is coming forth, it has the power to deliver. It has the power to save. It has the power to rescue. Doesn't matter what you're going through. Life, you, you might have given up on life. But it doesn't matter what you're going through. The power of God is able, through the word of God, to turn your destiny around. So please always take this moment very seriously. Every time you listen to our broadcast, I can guarantee you, it will never be the voice of man. It will never be the opinions of men. It will always be the proceeded word of the, the proceeded word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We began the series, the Overcomers Code. And I've been talking all these days on that. Hallelujah. And today I'll be sharing still in that same line. Something very, very important. Very, very important. Hallelujah. It's so important. You see, go with me to the scriptures. Go with me to the scriptures. In the book of James. Go with me to the book of James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'll read a few verses. It says, from verse 5. James chapter 1 from verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, without discrimination. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask of God. You see, it is an interesting scripture, but also the challenge here is this. Even those who lack wisdom, reading the scripture, do not even still realize that they lack wisdom. You see, the lack of wisdom is when you do not realize that you lack wisdom. The lack of wisdom is when you do not realize that you lack wisdom. And wisdom is when you realize that you need more wisdom. The lack of wisdom is when you do not realize that you lack wisdom. And wisdom is when you realize that you need more of wisdom. So anyone who tells you that they have wisdom, don't really have wisdom. Anyone who tells you, I have wisdom, they don't have wisdom. Because wisdom is not a level. Wisdom is in grace. It's like you're climbing a hill that you haven't gotten to the peak of the hill. You're climbing a mountain and you haven't reached the summit of the mountain. And yet, you, and yet you keep on telling yourself that you have climbed the mountain. No, you haven't climbed the mountain. You are in the process of climbing the mountain until you get to the summit. Before you can now say, I have climbed the mountain. But as long as you haven't gotten to the summit, you haven't climbed the mountain. Because there is an aspect of that mountain you have no clue about. 
you have no clue until you get to the summit. But listen to me, child of God. Listen to me. Wisdom has no summit. There is never going to be an end of wisdom. Why? Because wisdom is God. He is a God of wisdom. You can never exhaust God. So anyone who says, I have wisdom, they don't have wisdom. They don't have wisdom. The lack of wisdom is when you do not realize that you lack wisdom. And wisdom is when you realize that you need more of wisdom. Are you hearing me? So, the, 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 so James is telling us something here very important. Because most people read this in scripture. And they preach about it. But the question is this. After having read this scripture, what assessment can you make of yourself with regards to wisdom? Do you have wisdom? Or, or, do, or do you have wisdom? Hello? Do you have wisdom? I remember, I remember some months ago, my sister, she's watching me right now live. She called me and she saw me reading. And she said, really, brother, what? Man, when, when will you stop reading? When will you stop studying? You always read books. You always read books. You always read books. You always studying. When will you stop studying? You hear me? There is never going to be an end of studies. If you want to excel in life, if you want to grow in life, if you want to be an overcomer, if you want to succeed in life, there is never supposed to be an end of studies. You hear me? You hear me? You were never designed by God to come to a place where you are where, where you are satisfied with, with that which you have. No. Mankind was made in a way that you must always keep on gravitating towards more of God, towards more of wisdom. Hello? Because the human brain, the human brain can only become as effective as much as you engage it in studies, in thoughts. Are you hearing me? If you fail to study, if you fail to study, to empower your brain, you have built a plateau. If you fail to study, you have built a plateau in your brain. A level you cannot go past. A level you cannot go past. We have phones today. Most of you are watching this broadcast with your, with your phone, either iPhone or Android phone. But do you know that even the phone you have in your hand, the Android, the iPhone, do you know every single year there is, the, there is a new version of your phone, an upgrade? Many years ago, who could have believed that from, an, that from a telephone you could take pictures? I remember many years ago, way back in Africa, when phones just came, people would, would, would wear their phones on their neck. They would attach it to a rope on their neck. And their phone would be like, would, would be this big. And all it does is just to make calls. It will be this big. And if you have more money, then your phone was going to be a clapper. I, 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 of course, I guess most of you can relate with that. Amen. If, if you were like, you have money, your phone will be a clapper. So you have to open it like that. Amen. And, 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 and you wait for your next so that you know, you don't want it to get missing, you don't want it to fall, and all that stuff. A time came. If you had Blackberry phone, oh my God, you were on top. You were the top of the class, and yet still with BlackBerry, you have it had buttons you had to press. But if you have BlackBerry phone, oh my God, come on, what are we talking about? You are you are the top of the top. So people were, oh my God, I need BlackBerry. I need BlackBerry. The easiest way to get a girl at that time, give her a BlackBerry phone. You, you don't need to talk much again. Hello, just give her a BlackBerry phone. Oh my God, you you are the man of my dream. I can't do without you. I, oh my God. Hello. But hear me, child of God. Hear me. Phones have developed. Innovations have happened. Innovations have happened. Now, the phone with which I used to broadcast right now, it, it's a phone that has five cameras. It's a phone that has what? Five cameras. It can zoom. It can zoom almost 50, 50, 50 meters away. You can pick up an image from far and bring it so near and you may think that person was standing right in front of you. Why? Because man keeps on studying. 
Man keeps on exercising his brain. And because they keep on exercising their brain, they keep on seeing new possibilities. Well, it has to do with form. So today, your phone can actually be your office. What a computer can do, your phone can do it. You have phones that have scan scanning machine. You have phones that can scan. You don't need to go again to a public e internet to scan a document. Right from your phone, you can scan it. You can take the pictures. You can scan it. Hello? Emails, you don't need to go to the, to the computer. Right from your phone. It can do everything. Hello? You don't even need to get a video camera. With your phone, you can, you, you, you can, you, you can, you, you, you know, you, you can video. And you can edit from your phone. It has all these apps, all these applications to edit. You can live your life literally on your phone. Hello? On your phone, you have people who do YouTube, YouTube bloggers. They will use your phone, they will video, they will use your phone, they will edit, they will use your phone, they will post on YouTube. They, they monetize their YouTube account and money comes into their phone from YouTube. It's a whole office. Why? Because mankind keeps on studying. Mankind keeps on studying. Every child of God, every time you fail to study, you build a plateau. You can't go past that plateau. You get it. So when, when you say, I, I have studied already, then you begin to depreciate. And that's what the Bible tells us in, in, in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It tells us that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Now, the word cometh is constructed in the present continuous tense. It's constructed, the word, in the present continuous tense. What does that mean? So it says, and faith cometh. The word cometh is in the present continuous tense. It means faith comes now and keeps on coming by what? By studies. Now, faith, faith, faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing again and keep on hearing again the word of God. So now, but if you tell yourself, I have heard it already, then you lose faith. I know the Bible. Then you lose faith. You don't know the Bible. I have wisdom. Then you don't have wisdom. It, it, it gotta be a come. Yeah, it, the lack of wisdom is not realizing that you lack wisdom. And the presence of wisdom is realizing that you need wisdom. Are you hearing me? It's so important. It's so important. You see, we, we are talking about the overcomer's code. The overcomer's code. You see, because a lot of people will keep on being in captivity. A lot of people will keep on being in stagnation. There is no increase in wisdom. It, it is not visible in your life. Wisdom is the ability to make things work. Wisdom is the rightful application of knowledge. So if I got wisdom, my life needs to improve. If I have wisdom, the way I do things must change. If I have wisdom, the traps that people set for me, I must jump over those traps. If I have wisdom, the plans of the enemy against me, I must be able to jump to, I must be able to escape those, those plans because wisdom will direct. You don't talk of wisdom if wisdom doesn't direct. It got to be able to do what? To direct. To direct. And that is why you have to understand one thing. Wisdom in itself is not wisdom. It has to depend on God for it to be wisdom. Because wisdom, genuine wisdom, must have an aspect of discernment. It must have an aspect of discernment. Genuine wisdom. I'm not talking about the wisdom of this world. That, 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 that comes to zero. I'm talking about the wisdom of God. Bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. Wisdom and knowledge. So many people are going through circles, but they don't realize it. Simply because they are involved in movement. But, but, but their life is like a cycle. Today I'm succeeding and something would happen and it, I, I go down again. Then I take off, then I begin again afresh. And things, 
I'm going so great and awesome. Oh, wow, wonderful. But somewhere, 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 something happens. Oh, my God. And I still come down again. Oh, what happened? And, you know, so, so, a lot of people are going through cycles. It's not supposed to be so. It's not supposed to be so. You see, so the apostle said in verse 5, James 1 verse 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. Yet me, child of God. You see, what James is saying here is very tricky. Very tricky. Because you will, you will not understand James if you actually lack wisdom. Very tricky. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him, if any of you lack, lacks wisdom, you should ask God. So you now see, wisdom must be must be must be depending on God. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask of God. Now you see, James is talking to people who are hungry for more, people who want to experience a turnaround, people who are tired of the status quo. Hello, people who are tired of going circles. So he said, if any of you lack wisdom. Now, a, a, an intelligent person on reading this scripture will not consider himself to have had wisdom already. He will consider himself that he doesn't yet have wisdom because he knows he needs more of wisdom. I hope you get me. So, an, so, an, so, so a, an intelligent person, a person of wisdom, reading this scripture will not say, oh, I have the wisdom already. No. If he says I have the wisdom already, then genuinely he has no wisdom. Because if he was to have, then genuinely he has no wisdom. Genuinely he has no, he has no wisdom. Because if he actually had wisdom, why is he, why is he reading this book? Oh, hello, yeah. Because if actually he has wisdom, why is he reading this book? If any of you lack wisdom, have you come to the place that you realize? You need the wisdom of God. We're talking of the overcomer's code. How do I overcome? How do I excel? How do I become victorious in my calling, in my ministry, in my business, in my family? My business cannot be shaken. My family cannot be shaken. My ministry cannot be shaken. Everything about my life is shaken. And at the same time, I tell myself, ah, I have knowledge, I have wisdom. No, it's not possible. It's not. Bible says faith without works is dead. What is faith? Faith is a conviction. It's a conviction over the things you hope for. That it will come to pass. I may not have this now, but I have the faith that I will have it. That conviction on the things I hope for. That assurance on the things I hope for. That it will come to pass. Then it eventually comes to pass. So faith is not faith until it comes to pass. So Bible says, faith without works is dead. If you have faith, prove it. Show it. Let us see the evidence in your life. You have faith that you that, that, that you that you will be successful. Prove it. We have to be able to see you succeeding. Then we know, yes, genuinely you have faith because faith without works is dead. Are you hearing me, child of God? Are you hearing me? And once we do not understand this, we will always remain deficient. Once you do not understand this, you will remain deficient. A lot of people cannot more grow because they think they've grown already. A lot of people cannot more, can, can no more grow because they don't have a teachable spirit. They're not willing to learn. They think they know already. No. 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 Are you hearing me? So James says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without 
thought and it will be given to him. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt it. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the, by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. James makes us understand that God is the giver of wisdom. And God will not give wisdom. Hello, God will not give wisdom until we ask of him. God will not give wisdom until we do what? Until we ask of him. God will not give wisdom. There must be a desire for wisdom. It, wisdom is not, it, it's not one of those things that you're born with. You have to be able to acquire wisdom. Even if you have a high, a high IQ, it doesn't mean you have wisdom. I'm not talking of the wisdom of this world. That you went to school and you wrote an exam and you, and you made it. That's not wisdom. Hello? That's not necessarily wisdom. That is knowledge. Knowledge is the ability to know things. You know things. You read. You understand. You know things. That is knowledge. Wisdom is how do I apply that knowledge? Hello? How do I apply? Wisdom is what makes a married man a husband. Wisdom is what makes a man who has a child a father. Because having a child doesn't mean you, you are fathering that child. Having a wife doesn't necessarily mean you are genuinely a husband. You have to be able to understand what the word husband actually means. You have to understand that. You have to be able to understand that. So a lot of people may have knowledge, but they lack wisdom. And once you lack wisdom, it will show forth in your life. The lack of wisdom cannot hide. The lack of wisdom cannot hide. It will show forth. It will show forth. If you do not know, and you do not know that you do not know, and they that know, know that you do not know, but you do not know it, your problem is a chronic case. So how do I overcome in life? There got to be a divine wisdom of God. It cannot be gotten from this world. It cannot be gotten apart from God. Bible says about the rich fool. The Lord says, the one who says in his heart, there is no God, is a fool. The one who says in his heart, there is no God. It's the definition of foolishness. The fool has said in his heart, the race of God. Yeah. Hello, child of God. We have to come to the place of understanding, to the place of wisdom, to the place of realization that we know until we know this life is bigger than you as a person. Your brain is too small to fathom to contain, to measure the wisdom of God. Your brain is so small to fathom the wisdom of God, to measure the wisdom of God. Hello? It's so small. You can't have wisdom until you are depending on God. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 9, Verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is great insight. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you come to a place, you realize that there is a supreme being bigger than your life to whom you must be able to give an account to. I want to ask you a question. What thing, do you, what, what, what thing do you have now in your house that just spontaneously appear in your house? It wasn't there 
You do not buy it. You went out of the house in the morning. You locked the door. You came back in the night. You opened the door. Nobody was in your house before you. Then you stepped into your living room. Oh my God. And you see a new television set. It just appeared. No. It would be stupid to think like that. In fact, if you actually come into your house, if you actually come into your house and you see something new there that you do not bring, you start beginning to find out who brought it here. Hello? Because tangible objects do not move by themselves. Somebody must set it into motion. Tangible objects. Things you can touch. They do not move by themselves. Somebody, a force, must be able to put them in motion. Put them in time and space. Hello? A force, something must be able to carry them and put them in time and space. Everything tangible. Now, if nothing ever appeared in your house until someone brought it in, what, why should you think that this world appeared just like that? Nobody was responsible to bring it in. Hello? When you fail to realize there is a supreme being over the entire universe, you haven't yet begun in wisdom. When you fail to realize that the air you breathe is coming from the supreme being, you haven't yet begun in wisdom. Solomon said in Proverbs 9 verse 10, the fear of the Lord, the reverence of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What does that tell you? Your wisdom journey actually begins with your reverence to God. Anyone who doesn't reverence God, who doesn't submit to God, who thinks I'm, I'm the king of my life. I am the leader of my own life, of my own estate. I am the one who made the rules in this house. Not God. I'm the one, I'm, 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 I'm the boss of my world. And thinks he doesn't need God. You are engaged in your, own, in your things. You go about your daily activities. Without creating that time for God. It's the definition of stupidity. It's the definition of foolishness. It's the definition of lack of wisdom. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. There are fools today driving cars. There are fools today well dressed in, 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 in suit and tie. There are fools today Having children. There are fools today. Sitting in offices. The fool. Has said in his heart. There is no God. Child of God. Listen to me. You cannot succeed. Beyond. Your reverence, your reverence for God. You cannot succeed. Beyond your reverence for God. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. What do you think you can? What do you think you can achieve without God? What do you really think? Look at what Jesus Christ told the disciples in John. He said something very important in John chapter fifteen. In John fifteen, it says from verse one, "I am the I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener." He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Hello. Ah, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me? I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, 
you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. <laughs> Apart from me, without me, you can do nothing. It's a fact. It's an eternal fact. Someday I'll talk to us about the gifts of the Godhead. The gifts of the Father, the gifts of the Son, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Most of us, we, we may know the gifts of the Holy Ghost, the nine gifts. We may know the gifts of, of the Son. And to some he gave apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. But most of us, we do not know what the gifts of the Father are. And that is why we can, we can boast over the things we have. My own power gave me this. My own strength gave me this. My own abilities gave me this. I don't need to worship God. I'm successful. It's because you fail to realize the gifts of the Father. Because when the Father gives his gifts, he doesn't give those gifts. He gives those gifts to everybody. Because he created everyone. And that's why, hello, you may, unbelievers may not even realize that even the little wisdom they have in business was, was from the Father. They don't realize that. So they can boast over it. They don't realize that the air they breathe is a gift of the Father. They don't realize that until you come to a place, you, 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 are, you, you are sick. You go to the hospital, all the test is negative. You, all your organs are working so well. But somehow your lungs cannot take in oxygen. But they've done all the tests and your system is okay. You, you look very good. Your results are wow. But your, but your lungs can no longer take in oxygen. And you give up the ghost. Why? Child of God, listen to me. Listen to me. Stubbornness of heart. Hardness of heart. Has driven people into outer darkness. To outer destruction. I, I look at people who make their boss without God. And I cry. I say, oh, what a stupid man. What a stupid person. I know what I'm talking to you about. I have been in this journey with the law for 28 years. Began when I was still a kid. I know what I'm talking to you about. The word of God is eternal. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Do you realize that in your life, child of God? Do you realize that? Are you walking with the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you begun with him a relationship? If you do not have a relationship with Jesus, yet me, child, yet me, you are not a child of God. Someday I'll teach us about the fatherhood of God. There are four different fatherhoods. And, four, and there, there are four different fatherhoods of God. So when you pray to, when you pray to God, say, our father, which art in heaven. You know I mean? That word, our father, there are four fatherhoods of God. God is a father to mankind at four different levels. First of all, the creative fatherhood. The creative fatherhood. By this fatherhood, he created the universe. He made everything. Human beings, stones, animals, and all that stuff. When the disciples were worshipping and praising, when people were praising Jesus Christ, the Pharisees came and said, Ah, Master, ask them to keep quiet. Jesus said, Even if they keep quiet, the stones will begin to praise me. Why? I created the stones. Hello? The creative fatherhood. But in this creative fatherhood, salvation is not guaranteed. So the fact that God created you doesn't mean you have eternal life. Because salvation doesn't come from the creative fatherhood. And that's why unbelievers will go to hell. Though God created them. So the question is this. If God created man, why does he still send man to hell? These different fatherhoods, they have their restrictions. They have their limitations. A fool will say no. They, they, they have their restrictions. They have their limitations. Amen. There, there are benefits of the creative fatherhood. One of the benefits of the creative fatherhood is this. By, create, by creating mankind, he makes his reign to fall both on the palms of the righteous and on the palms of the unrighteous. 
So he still takes that responsibility to still give basic basic needs to all mankind, whether you believe in him or not. Hello? By the creative of the world, he, he deposited in mankind the ability to reproduce. So whether you are a believer, you believe in God or you don't believe in God, as a woman, you will still conceive and have babies. These were things given within the creative order, the creative fatherhood. But there are limitations of the creative fatherhood. There are things you can't have. There are blessings you cannot have. There are protections you cannot have. Because man, when man sinned in the Garden of Eden, man broke his relationship with God, with God in the creative fatherhood. So God is not obligated to, to take responsibility over certain things. If you are only at the level of the creative fatherhood, unbelievers, that's where they belong. Whatever they experience from God is by mercy, is by grace, is not by right. It's not by right. It's not by right. It's by mercy. It's just by grace. It's, just, it's, it's, it's by the creative order. So you have the creative fatherhood. You have the generative, the, you, 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 you have the, the creative fatherhood, you have the theocratic fatherhood. It's the relationship that the father has with the nation of Israel. I won't go into that. You have the third one, is the generative fatherhood. It's the relationship that the father has with the son, Jesus Christ. When Christ resurrected and Mary Magdalene saw him in the garden and wanted to touch him, he said, don't touch me. I have not yet gone to my father and your father, to my God and your God. He did not say, I have not yet gone to our father. No, it, it, it cannot be our father with Christ. No, because it's because Christ comes under a different order. He's the only begotten of the father. Hello, he's the only begotten. He's the first begotten of the Father. He comes under a different fatherhood. We come under what? The fourth one, which is called the adoptive. We have been adopted because we have lost our identity through sin in the Garden of Eden. And God worked out a strategy to adopt us into his family. First, third John. First John chapter 3. Amen. First John chapter 3. From verse 1, behold, what manner of love that the Father has shown towards us by adopting us into his family. By so we come under the adoptive fatherhood, Christ comes under the generative fatherhood. Hello, now this fatherhood, so it is it, it is in the adoptive fatherhood, you mean that salvation is guaranteed. Why? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6 and verse 7. Hello, it, it, it says, wow, we have been accepted in the beloved, in God. Why? By the sacrificial blood of Christ Jesus. That was what made us accepted in God. We have been accepted in God by the sacrificial blood of Christ. We have been adopted by God because his son Jesus gave his blood for us. And it is only in, in the adoptive fatherhood that salvation is guaranteed. What does that tell you, child of God? If you fail to realize and to recognize the adoptive, the, 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 the sacrificial blood of Jesus Christ, you do not have eternal life. You do not have salvation. I don't care how you quote it. So you may be saying, oh, Jesus was a white man. Who told you that? Be careful. Oh, Jesus, no, 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 he's not God. Oh, the white man brought a religion, blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. You, you, you are displaying how much you don't know. You're displaying how much you don't know. You're displaying how much you don't know. I am in America. A lot of, most Americans may not, may not be Christians. They are atheists, don't believe in God. Yet they are white people. So why do you, why will you say uh, it's the white Jesus, the white, the white, the white Jesus? Ignorance on a rampage. Ignorance parading the streets. Ignorance. Parading.
operating the switch. Once you do not know, and you do not know that you do not know, your case, your, your case is a case study. Your case is pathetic. You need help. You need deliverance. You need mercy. Child of God, wake up from sleep. Wake up from slumber. Get up. You cannot excel. You cannot become victorious. You cannot be a champion. You cannot be an overcomer. If you do not understand these basics, these are kindergarten. These are elementaries of the faith. Basics of the faith. We haven't even begun going into, into strong meat, into strong food. I'm still giving us kindergarten. Kindergarten information. Kindergarten knowledge. It's a, it's a basic. It's the basic. The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. There is no God. Are you hearing me, child of God? Are you hearing me? You got to come to the place where you say, Lord, I need to experience you. I need to understand you. I need to come into unity with you, into, into relationship with you, Lord. I don't want to be ordinary. I don't want to be the same. I'm living my life in, 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 in an illusion. In an illusion. Help me come to the realization of the truth. Help me come to the realization of the truth. Ah, hear me, child of God. The songwriter says, When I saw it, the wondrous cross on which the king of glory laid. My richest gain, I count but loss. Hello, my richest gain. When I surveyed the wondrous cross on which the king of glory laid. My, 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 my richest gain. I consider them but as lost. If all you have as project is to own a house, have a good car. You have not yet begun with God. You've not yet begun with God. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. You invested all your life to purchase this house. That you living in that house is not even guaranteed. It is not even guaranteed that you may make five years in that, in that house you're building. It is not even guaranteed. It is not even guaranteed. How many people have built mansions and at the end of the day were buried at the back of the house? How many people? How many people? Why should we spend all our time investing on the things of this life and yet our spirit that we ought to invest in is sick? Casualty. You, all you spend is you, you watch movies. Invest in your flesh. But you don't spend time with the word of God to build your spirit. And you say you have wisdom. Every day you go for your business. You go to your job. You go to your office. And you have, you have no time for God. Yet. You have no time for the Bible. Yet. Oh, I was, so busy. I was so busy today. I couldn't pray. I couldn't read the Bible. Hello. But you had one hour break. You went to a restaurant. You could create time for, for restaurant. But you could not create time for Bible. You could create time to, to, to sit down and talk with friends. But you could not create time for Bible. What is wrong with us? Paul was right. When he told Timothy. In the latter days. Many shall be lovers of pleasure. Lovers of selves. And not lovers of God. They will make time for everything except God. They will go to, them, to, to their business Monday to Saturday. Sunday to go to church, no. is the day for laundry. It's the day, it's the, it's the, it's the day for sports. They go to the field to play soccer. Something's wrong with us. Something's wrong with us. Man has drifted away from God displaying his stupidity. 
display his foolishness. Display his ignorance. How is that possible, child of God? The Lord is calling us into a place in him. God is calling you and I into a place in him. Give me child of God. God is calling you and I into a place in him. God is calling you and I into a place in him. Hello? Into a place in him. Are you ready for him? Haggai said in Haggai chapter, four, chapter 1 from verse 5. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not but you have not enough. Hello. I read it very clearly. Hello. Amen. It says. Now this is what the Lord. The Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought. To your ways. Consider your ways. You have planted much. But harvested little. You eat. But never have enough. You drink. But never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in the purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Consider your ways. Child of God, I come to talk to you today. Consider your ways. You hear me? You can make all your boastings now. Because you can still have appetite to eat food. You can make all your boastings now. Because after eating food, you feel as you use the, the restroom. You get up by yourself and you go to the restroom. You put down your pants and you pee. And you poop by yourself. And you clean yourself and come back out again as a man. You can make your boast now. Until the day will come. When you, when you want to eat, you don't have appetite. You want to pee. You want to poop. Your legs cannot carry you. And someone has to come and, 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 and put on your diapers in bed. Consider your ways. You're making your boasting. Now, I don't need God. I don't need God. Because you still have the mouth to talk. Because you still have the mouth to talk. A friend of mine, a neighbor of us, a young boy, came to America five months ago. Five months ago, America was his dream. Oh, it was his dream. I remember while I was in Cameroon, he would come and meet with me. I would share with him the gospel. I would talk with him. Nice boy. Gentle. Came to America through the teacher's exchange program. He came as a teacher and began teaching five months ago. In the month of January, the, the first drove the car to visit his brother to celebrate the new year and was driving back when he, when he had an accident. No, no bruises on his body. No bruises on his body. No one but got into a coma and has been in coma from January the 1st up till today. Child of God, my heart was broken. I'll be flying one of these days to go meet him and pray for him. My heart was broken. What did he do to deserve that? What did he do? The, 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 the school he was teaching for had to fly his wife and his children from Cameroon to come and help him in the hospital. What did he do to deserve that? It could have been you. It could have been me. If not the grace of God. If not the mercy of God. If you do not fear God, 
beat your chest and say, I don't have need for God. I'm a man of wisdom. I don't need God. Beat your chest. If you, if, if, if you don't fear God, beat your chest. And say, I know where the air I'm breathing is coming from. Beat your chest. I don't need, I, I know where the air I'm breathing is coming from. I don't need God. Yes, I don't need God. I know where the air I'm breathing is coming from. Beat your chest. But if you cannot beat your chest and tell yourself that, the Yemi, from dust, you were taken. Unto dust, you shall return. One of the toughest things I've ever done in my life was to officiate in the burial ceremony of one of my friends. Say, Pastor Willie brought, he'll be the one to officiate in the burial ceremony. I'm the one to, 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 to pray and to preach and to do all of that. I'm the one to declare when they are putting the cops in the, in, in, in the grave. I am the one to take, I'm the one to first take the ground and throw on the coffin. Ah! It was a painful experience. Painful. Painful. My friend, I have to officiate his, her burial. I'm the one to, to say, to, I'm the one to give the go for the cops to be put in the grave. Then all eyes listening to me. I'm the one to talk. I'm the one to take, to, to carry the first ground and throw it in the, in the grave on the coffin. And I preached and I was broken. And I looked at my friend in the grave. With, a, with ground in my hands. And all I said was from dust. You were taken. Unto dust. You shall return. Painful. But the Bible says for the righteous. For they that know the Lord. To be absent in the body. Is to be present with the Lord. Child of God. Listen to me. I want to encourage you, wherever you are right now, if you, if you cannot beat your chest, if you cannot beat your chest, if you cannot beat your chest to say, I, 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 I don't need God, I know where the air and the oxygen I'm breathing is coming from. I don't, if you cannot beat your chest that, then you got to give your life now to Jesus Christ. But not giving your life down to Jesus Christ is like you're, you're, you're beating your chest. I don't need God. I know where the air I'm bringing. I'm breathing is coming from. I don't need God. As I go on the highway to drive, I don't need God. No car can touch me. I don't need God. <laughs> but if you, cannot, if you cannot beat your chest like that, my brother, put down your title. Put down your certificates. Put down your qualifications. Your dust. My sister, put down the pride. Put down your beauty. Put down the money. You are dust. Unto dust shall you return. Worship him. Talk to Jesus Christ. Talk to him. Oh, worship him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus. Mm. Jesus. The King of Kings. Oh, Shadarabu Salabu Skiata. Yes, Lord. Jesus. The King of Kings. Oh, yes, Lord. Worship Him. Worship Him. Give Him praise. Worship Him, Lord. Zo Talalabashi Gotayaba. Oh, worship him. Bless him. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to make you a child of God. Maybe you're a believer. But a believer who is more concerned with the cares of this life. Recommit yourself to God now. Recommit yourself to the Lord. Yes, God. Bow down. Talk to Jesus. 
No other God, Lord. Yes, Jesus. If you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're making that commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ right now, to say, Lord, come into my heart. Save my soul. Make me a child. From today, I am born again. You want to make that, that commitment? Pray with me and say, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Save my soul. From today, I am born again. I'm a child of God. I will never be the same again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name. Amen. Worship Him. Give Him praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. And your tears, O Lord, they were celebration and joy unto us. Yes, Lord. And we found you to be worthy, God. Yes, Lord. Bless Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. He is God. 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 Yes, Lord. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Savior. Mata la la ba shigon ta da da ba shigon ta yaba. Zo talia shalo saminda lush kamala luciata. Le da da ba shigon ta balania shalo skia. Yes, Lord. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Jesus. I pray for your people. Take hold of their lives in Jesus' name. Bring them to the place of that realization, Father. That they may know there is none like Jesus. Yes, God. Open our eyes to see you. Open our hearts. We are not locked down. To bow before you, Lord. And we are not locked in. Oh, yes. We mm. When we are in the presence of the Lord. Talk to me. God opens where mm -hmm. locked, Yes, Lord. Worship Him and give Him praise. Yes, in Him we live. In Him we have our being. Oh yes. We have the key of David. Oh yes. The mm. We worship Your God. La Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh yes, God. My God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. Yes. Yes, be healed. Yes, Lord. Jesus, he will bless. Yes, God. Mm. Come to worship him and give him praise. Bless his holy name. Mm. See. Mm -mm. Yes, God. Yes, Holy Ghost. Just pour your heart to the Lord Jesus and ask him to fill you. This place for this is holy ground. Yes, Lord. So come and bow. Worship Him and bless Him. Pour your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Consume me. 
fire. Yes, Lord. We are some praises. Fill this place. Oh, this is holy ground. So come and bow. So come and bow down to Jesus. Yes, God. Father, I pray. I bless you, Holy Ghost. I give you praise. I pray for your people in the name of Jesus. I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit that God, you would, you would bring us to a place of encounter with you. That we may realize that life without Jesus is zero. That we may realize it's not only going to church. It's having that relationship with Christ Jesus. For that is the beginning of wisdom. Lord, I pray. Let your grace be revealed upon your people. Get them out of the captivity of sin. And the bondage of darkness. And the bondage and the deception of ignorance. Bring them, Lord, to the realization of the truth. That they may submit their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. And be saved. And be saved. And be saved. Thank you, precious King. Because you alone are God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, heal your people. Take hold of their lives. Be healed in your body in Jesus' name. May the grace of God be revealed upon your life. May you excel. May you succeed. May the hand of God be upon your life in Jesus' name. You will not die without living for God. Without fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Lord, I thank you. Every chain that was keeping them bound. May they be loose and be free. In Jesus name. Yes, Lord. Mm. My God. No, any other treasure. Yes, Lord. You are my heart desire. You are my heart. Mm, the, oh my God, the spirit without measure. Without measure. Mm -hmm. Unto your name. Unto your name. I bring my sacrifice. I will bring my sacrifice, God. My sacrifice. I will have no other God. <laughs> I will serve no foreign God. I will serve no foreign God. Not the God of ancestors. <laughs> no any other. No any other treasure. For you are my hiding place. My heart desire. Mm. The spirit without measure. Bless him. The spirit without measure. Unto your name. Unto your name. I will bring. I will serve no foreign God. No foreign God. Not a God of ancestors, no. Not a God of Juju, no. But Yahweh himself. So come and bow down. Not a God of African tradition. But a God of the heavens and the earth. Not a God of the dead. But a God of heaven and the earth. I will serve no foreign God. The spirit without measure. Yes, Lord. Mm. Unto your name. I will bring my sacrifice. Yes. Not to go sacrifice powers. To dead ancestors and dead gods. Child of God. Child of God. There is none like him. There is none like him. There is none like him. You go to the village and you sacrifice. 
the God of my father, the God of my mother, the God of this and all that stuff. No, that's not a God. I will serve no foreign God. Yes, no any other treasure. Oh, yes, bless him, bless him, bless the Lord Jesus. Him alone is God. For you are my heart desire. The spirit without measure. The spirit without measure. Unto your name. Unto your name. I will bring my sacrifice. I will bring my sad. Yes, unto him. You should bring your sacrifice. Not to the gods of the dead. I will serve. No, I grew up in African tradition. Where we were worshipping the gods of big mommy, grandparents. Grandpa, poor libation. That's not God. Mm -mm. That's not God. How come your granddad died and suddenly has now become God? How come? Who told you that? When grandpa died, he now became God? You go Paul Ibesha and you say, in the name of my grandfather. That's witchcraft. Unto your name. I know Africans can relate with this. Mm. I will bring my sacrifice. We bless you, God. We bless you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Let your name be praised forever. I pray for your people. That God, you will get us out of ignorance. You will get us out of sin, out of confusion. Oh God, bring us to the place of the realization of the truth. That we will know there is no God beside you. That we will know that there is no God, Father, beside you. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Savior. We bless you, Redeemer. Let your name be praised for eternity. Oh, we thank you, God. And I pray as many as have given their lives to you today, that God, they will not be the same. We worship you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, God. Mm. Yes, God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. That's my dad. Teacher Ignatius, I'm happy with what my dad has written. Yes, man of God, life without Jesus is zero. You just pronounced that word out of my mouth when I was about to write. More power to your elbows with Jesus as your intermediary. Daddy, you will hear from me. <laughs> you will hear from me that today. Mm -hmm. You, I'm, I'm glad when I see my dad right there because my dad and myself went through battles with this gospel thing but i'm glad he and because he loved me and he, he thought he thought i was being deceived so we went through real battles my, my dad came to uh, a youth ministry i was fellowshipping and threatened the place that if they don't send me out he will set the place on fire <laughs> Amen. But when my dad comment and write something like that, I'm happy. Daddy, I'll, 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 you will hear from me today. Mm, so calm. And my sweet mom is there. My sisters are there. My brothers are there. All of you, you are there. God bless you. God keep you strong. The grace of God will rest upon you mightily in the name of Jesus. You will make it. You will excel in life. You will be victorious. In the name of Yeshua. The revival has begun with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God somebody. Again this is Willie Brock. Teacher Gospel Heroes World Missions. Mandate restoring the message. Redefining the ministry. Refocusing the church. I want to encourage you. Trust the Lord and stand for him. Hallelujah.
the Overcomers Code. Do not miss out on tomorrow's broadcast. It will be amazing. And again, just let us know in the month of April, we are coming to Houston, Texas with a conference in the month of April. Amen. You do not want to miss. Those of you in Houston, please make sure you inbox me. Hallelujah. In the month of April, I'll give us details as the days go by. In the month of April, we'll be in Houston, Texas for a revival conference and the power of God will be released. Hallelujah. God bless you. Good to see you, Pastor Marco Luna. God bless you. Nene and all of you, God bless you all. Muma, God bless you all in the name of Yeshua. I can't see all the names, but the grace of God will rest with every single one of you in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. And so please, I want to encourage you. Trust the Lord. We have books on Amazon. Go to Amazon Books by Willie Brought Teacher. You will find our books there on Amazon. Please make sure you, you get yourself copies. It will bless your life. It will bless your heart in the name of Yeshua. Yes, Nene, I'll, I'll, I'll update you people with regards to the date of the program in Houston, Texas. Amen. I'll update you people. But I think it's going to be the weekend of the 23rd. It's going to be two days, Friday and Saturday. Amen. So please, those of you in Houston, Texas, please get ready. Reach out to me. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Quintus says tomorrow is Saturday. Oh, yeah, tomorrow is Saturday. Sorry, I, I don't broadcast on Saturdays. Amen. So I'm going to be coming live again on Monday. You don't want to miss the continuation of this series. But of course, we're going to have uh, these teachings on YouTube as well. So please watch on YouTube. If you've not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gospel Heroes TV. Gospel Heroes is one word. Gospel Heroes TV. Amen. May the grace of God rest with you. May the hand of God rest with you. You will make it. You will excel in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So please, God bless you and please be a part of this ministry. You, you will see on our post how to give to this ministry. Amen. Be a part of what the Lord is doing. Your life will not be the same. I love you all. And stay blessed. Stay strong. i see you on Monday, 7 a.m. Central Time. Don't forget to share the videos. Bye-bye.